everyone, in our new tutorial we will show you how to create a simple game called Jump Trainer. In this project a floor, a current jump and the best jump levels will be highlighted with lines. We'll use the floor detection and other features from NewTrack SDK. Let's get started. Let's take a scene from the NewTrack GPU Draw Frames tutorial as a basis. Resave the scene so as not to change the original. In the original scene, the boxes displaying the depth, RGB and segment maps are separated. We'll change this scene so that a segment map is displayed over the RGB map. Make the segment map semi-transparent. We don't want to change all colors in the segment rendering component, so let's change the color only in the raw image component by making it semi-transparent. To keep the aspect ratio, let's add the aspect ratio feature component to the background object. Specify the aspect mode as fit in parent. Now when you change the aspect ratio, the background object will always fit into the frame. In order to match the segment and RGB, we need to set the depth to color registration parameter to true in new track config. Let's create a jump trainer script. First, we add a directive to the Unity Engine UI namespace to get access to the Unity UI components. Add a field in which a reference to the aspect ratio feature is specified. All calculations will be performed in the update method. First, let's check the presence of a frame from the depth sensor. The aspect ratio is defined as the frame width divided by its height. Please note that we convert the width to float so that we don't divide in by int and get an integer value. Let's put the script on our canvas and specify a reference to the aspect ratio feature. Let's run the scene and make sure that the segment is correctly displayed over the RGB map and the aspect ratio is also correct. Before calculations you need to check whether at least one skeleton was found for the current frame. The track can calculate the floor plane by representing the data as an arbitrary point on the floor plane, as well as its normal. This data can be obtained from the user frame. In Unity, it is convenient to represent the floor plane as a plane structure. This structure has convenient methods for projecting a point onto a plane and fast ray casting. As arguments, the plane takes an arbitrary point on the floor plane and a normal vector during initialization. Here we get the skeleton of the current user. Now let's describe a method for determining the jump height. The algorithm is based on calculating the distance from the user's lowest joint to the floor. As parameters, we pass the current user's skeleton and the lowest joint type. However, the second argument is marked as out, which means that the changed value will be available from outside the current method. This is somewhat similar to passing the reference to a variable that the value will be saved to. We define the lowest joint as the head joint and the jump height as the maximum value of the float type. Let's iterate all the joints from the new track joint type enumeration. To get an iterator, you can use a num get values. However, to use it, we need to add a directive to the system na namespace. As arguments, we pass the type of our enumeration using type of. This construction simulates a list with all types of joints from new track joint type. Now we need to calculate two points for each joint. The first is its position in space. 
The second is a point projected on the floor plane. This can be done using the closest point on plane method. Also, please note that we perform all calculations in millimeters. Now it's better to calculate the distance between two points using vector of three distance. We compare it with the previous value and choose the smaller one. We also save the current joint. Now declare a variable that will store the lowest joint type. Let's use the method for calculating the jump height. To store the current jump height, we declare public properties. Set for the current property will be private so that external scripts cannot change its value. To avoid false positives, we describe a method which will check that legs do not touch the floor. This method will take the current user's skeleton as an argument. To determine that both legs do not touch the floor, we need to take the positions, for example, of the left and right ankles and determine the distance from the real position to the point projected on the floor. If the values for the left and right feet are greater than the specified delta, we can say that the user is making a jump. Now let's declare a field for storing the delta value of the jump start. And compare the distance from the floor to the feet with a specified delta. Please note that we performed the calculations in millimeters and set the jump start delta in meters. So we need to multiply the delta by 10 to the minus third power. A similar operation is made for the second leg. Now we can determine if the feet are on the floor or not. If not, we can update the jump height data. Now let's add a line showing the current jump. To do this, we need to take uh, the real joint position and project it in the coordinate system of the depth sensor frame. In fact, the coordinates in the screen space are already stored in the structure that describes the joint. But we'll consider another method for calculating the projected coordinates, since we'll need it later. To do this, we add a method that will return the unity vector. As arguments, it will take the new track vector of real coordinates, as well as the current depth frame. Depth sensor includes the method for converting real coordinates to frame coordinates and vice versa. These methods can be used with new track vectors. To get the normalized coordinates from 0 to 1, we divide x and y by the height and width of the frame, respectively. Then we convert the new track vector to the unity vector using the 2 vector 3 method. Now we can use this method to project the real coordinates of the joint on the depth frame. Let's add a field for storing a reference to the line object displaying the current jump. We also add a text field to display a numerical representation of the jump height. To correctly display the position of the jump height line relative to the parent, add the reference to the direct transform of the parent. Now 
well as change the line position relative to the parent. To do this, we create a new vector. As the x coordinate, we pass 0, and as the y coordinate, we pass the height of the parent rectangle multiplied by the normalized coordinates of the lowest joint. We also update the text field with a numeric representation of the jump height. To make the text formatting convenient, we use the string format method and formatting templates. To convert the jump height from millimeters to meters, we multiply it by 10 to the minus third power. In the base rect field, specify reference to the canvas object. Create a line from the UI panel component, make it a child of the background object. We also set up anchors to the bottom edge, set the height to about 2 or 3 pixels. Specify the color, for example, light blue. Also make sure that the line object is placed after the RGB and segment objects. Set a reference to the line object in the jump trainer component. Add a text object to represent the jump height in numbers, adjust its position and size. Make it the child of the background object. Change the elements order by placing the text object after the RGB and segment objects. You can set alignment, font size and default value of the text component. Match the text color with the line color, add the outline component to highlight the text. Let's run the scene and check the result. As we can see, when only one leg is lifted, the jump is not performed. Now let's add the floor line for the current user. We'll take the user's waist position as a basis and project this point onto the floor. The point projected on the floor plane can also be obtained using the closest point on plane method of the plane structure. Now we project this point in th into the coordinates of the depth sensor frame. However, the first argument of this method takes a new track vector and the point on the floor was calculated in the unity vector. For convenience, we'll add a method for converting a unity vector into a new track vector. No calculations are needed, we just convert the format. Let's add a conversion of the unity vector to the new track vector. Like with the jump line, we add an object to display the floor line under the user. The position of the floor line is changed like the position of the jump height line. Now let's add the floor line object to the scene. To do this, just copy the jump height line, rename it and change the color, for example, to gray. We also need to update the object reference in the jump trainer component. Run the scene to check that the floor line is always displayed under the user. Now let's add saving and displaying the height line of the best jump. Similar to displaying the jump height line, we add an object to display the best jump line and the text field for numerical representation. If the current jump height exceeds the best result, we update the last one.
Similar to the height property of the current jump, we add a property that stores the best jump height. Update the numeric value and the value displayed in the text field. For convenient string formatting, we use the string format method formatting templates. We can get the point representing the best jump height relative to the current user by adding the floor normal vector multiplied by the best jump height to the current user's floor point. This point must also be converted to the frame coordinate system. We change the position offline displaying the best jump in the same way as we change the position of the floor of the current jump line. Let's add the best jump line to the scene by copying, for example, the current jump line and changing its color to green. We also add an object with a text component to represent the best jump height in numbers. Match the text color with the line color. And set the references to the line and text object in the jump trainer component. That's it, now we can use this project as a reference for creating more complex applications, for example for fitness training or rehabilitation. We hope that this project was useful for your case. Thank you for watching, bye!